Hi, and welcome to The Real Dad Show. I'm Jimmy, and this is my son, Jesse. Today, we're gonna to be working on the avalanche. We've got an error code, and uh, we need to see what's wrong with it. So, let's go. Okay, we're in the avalanche right now, and we are gonna be using the OBD2 scanner to see what our error codes are. If you've never used one of these before, they're real simple. You can pick them up pretty cheap at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any auto parts store. So what you do is you go under your steering wheel. You find this little connector right here. So okay. you just plug that right into there. And that's it. Then, as you can see, it's powered up. Now you just turn your car on. All you do is just push read. And you see it says two codes. So let's hit read down. And it's the PO455. And that's it. Okay. Okay. So the uh, code reader told us that we had an error code, which was P0455. Now, when we looked that up on the internet, it said, of course, there was a problem with the EVAP system. Now, the most common causes is your uh, gas cap may be old. It may be just not clicking right, or it might need to be tightened. Uh, some cars will give you a little warning that says uh, gas cap is not on or gas cap loose. We, uh, we went and bought a new gas cap uh, about a week ago, and we were still having that problem that the uh, check engine light was still coming on. So the second most common is the purge valve. Uh, so there are two different things. There is the purge valve, or the canister purge valve, and the canister purge valve solenoid. So since we don't know which one is uh, actually which part needs to be replaced, or if they do, we just decided just to get both parts and uh, change them. After we finish this, if the uh, error code or the uh, check engine light still comes on, um, then we're gonna have to go to a mechanic. Okay, so we went down to AutoZone, looked at the parts we needed, and this is what we have. This, this is the purge valve canister, or the canister purge valve. Now, that part number for this is AutoZone PV424, and it's a dirt last. You get this one, it's got a lifetime warranty. And this is part number PV485. And that is the canister purge valve solenoid. So as you can see, uh, they are a lot cheaper than going to a mechanic. And um, watched a few uh, YouTube videos and, and it seems very easy to, to do. So we're gonna go ahead and do this instead of paying a mechanic to charge me about two or three hundred dollars to do something we can do ourselves so around here if we can fix it let's do it okay so the tools we're going to be using today socket wrench an extension a reducer and an eight millimeter socket and a flathead screwdriver now we're going to go underneath the hood here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this plastic cover off which is held on just by that one nut. Okay. Okay. And there's that. Let's set this aside. Okay. That little guy right there is what we're going to be changing now. Here's our new part. And we're going to loosen that one little nut right there. And it'll pop right out. We're going to remove this electrical kit connection right there. And this hose. Okay, so let's do that. Put that in our pocket. 
pocket so we don't lose it. zip tie right there and I don't know why I'm gonna cut that off there we go okay so this is the part that we took out there's a replacement part as you can see, they're just slightly different. Uh, that's because this is the original one that came from the factory, originally installed. Um, and this, of course, is the one we got at AutoZone. They're never gonna look exactly alike unless you get it from Ford. And uh, where we paid about 30 bucks for this replacement one from Ford, it probably cost us closer to about 70, 80, even 100 bucks, who knows. But we're saving money. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to put it right back in that one spot. But as you can tell, the difference between the two is that the original has this little rubber gasket, which is fine. We are going to keep that and put it right back on our new one. And that's just gonna get a tighter still once we install it. So, screw. All right. Tighten this by hand. Make sure it's seated right. Okay. We'll do the last turn. We'll let the socket wrench. There we go. All right. Next, we're just going to put everything back. noticed like we saw earlier that the original part had a little zip tie in there I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing because I did notice there was a little play uh, that's probably just to keep it tight well, let's just trim that now there you go and right back where it was make sure everything's tight all right, so let's get the cover. Okay, if you, can you see these little clips back here? Put this little notches on the cover go right in there, so make sure that they do go right back in there all the way. Okay, and then That's my neighbor in his shitty car. Now the canister. This is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but not too much, I promise. This is located under the truck towards the back where the uh, gas tank is. Really, all we're gonna need is just a flathead screwdriver for this because where it mounts, there's really nothing to unscrew. It just slides into the post right there and it's held. So, let's get under the truck. All right, can you see it right there? Here's the spare tire. Here's the muffler. Right up there. That's the canister. Let's see if we can get a better shot. Okay. 
here's a better angle. So there's the electric connector. And right there is a hose that leads to the gas tank. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna take this connector off. That was that. And now we're gonna just slot this over. It will come off. There we are. And then this. Be careful that you don't break this part here. Okay. So, getting this out was a little harder than we thought because these little connectors right in here close around that ridge so what we had to end up doing was just getting two tiny screwdrivers and pushing in it to see these are the connectors and that little plate right there is what's where it slides in and like I said there's nothing to uh, bolt on or anything it'll just be fine right there here's the new part we are gonna first pop it in this connector make sure it snaps like that and we will put in the electrical connector Right back to where it was. Just make sure that's all the way in. And there it is. Okay, now we're back in the truck. Let's start it up. check engine light is still on so what we're going to do is we're going to clear it with the OBD okay. there's the two codes let's hit erase Again for confirm. Now it's racing and it's done. Turn the car on. You can see. Check engine light is off. As you saw, after we uh, cleared it. It's not going to be ready for smog as we need to drive the car for about 100 miles. And um, probably by next Saturday, we can take it to a smog shop and uh, get it smogged. Hopefully, no uh, more engine uh, check light, check engine lights will come back on. And uh, we'll be happy. Okay, thank you for joining us. I'm Jimmy. I'm Jesse. And this is The Real Dad Show. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Thanks again. Remember, anybody can be a father, but it takes a real special person to be a dad. God bless you.